Bank never owns any money with itself. It takes money from the customer and gives it back to the customer. The idle money is going to earn some more interest and it is going to come back to the hands of the consumer at any given point of time. The profit of the bank is directly dependent on the loans and the recovery of the loans as far as possible. Good morning and welcome to the second session of Management of Banking and Insurance Services. Now in this session, we are going to talk about the functions of a banker. In the previous session, we tried to understand what a bank is and what do they do as a banking. So here, we are going to go in depth in order to understand what are the true functions of a banker in depth in terms of one by one and try to understand in detail how does the bank functions as an entity altogether. Now moving forward, the first introduction which I would always like to give about a bank is that they collect money from customers for the purpose of investments and provide customers with an interest rate altogether. Now, this is an interesting concept that you need to understand. Many a time people ask this question, where does the bank keep all its money? The fact or the importance behind it is that or the truth behind it is that bank never owns any money with itself. It takes money from the customer and gives it back to the customer. Now, how does it come forward? Is it really true? The answer is yes. Why? Because when the bank starts borrowing money from you, the same money is rotated back into the economy by providing a loan to somebody else. So your money, which is taken in the form of deposit, is again invested or rotated back into the system by the bank for giving a loan or giving a facility to somebody else. So what is the process or nature of bank altogether? They are an institution which will try to keep the money moving in the economy. For them, money is a liquidity factor altogether. It is not that I have just taken the money from you. I will put it in a locker and every month or every year you will get an interest. If the bank has to give you interest, it has to earn interest from somewhere else. So that is why I always say that they collect money from the customer and invest that money back in the market in the form of loans or in the form of other factors altogether. So the concept of banking is all about rotating around the customer, keeping the customer as center. You keep moving around him with his own money. So at the end of the day, am I going to get your money back? Am I going to get my money secured? Definitely yes. Why? Because banks are not going to cheat you in terms of taking your money. Though there might be cases of negative factors also that has happened in our country. But in ground reality, let me tell you, what happens is that banks always keep with an adequate deposit levels or an adequate factor levels that try to prevent them from going into a defaulting mode altogether. So the ideology here for a bank is very, very clear. What they tend to do is that they will tend to create a repository of cash, use that money into different purposes, maintain the liquidity ratios, maintain the standards that are provided by the RBI and then diversify that money back into the market so that everybody is able to get some return out of it. So this is why the banking concept is quite interesting for all of us to study and understand. Somewhere down the lane, when I talk about this investment, the investment is also done with a purpose. Why? Because unless and until you are able to invest it back into the market and you are able to get a definitive return out of it, you will not be able to service back your depositors. 
So it is very, very important for the banks to understand the lending rate needs to be higher than the borrowing rate. So I will always say lending rate is greater than the borrowing rate altogether. If you lend at a higher rate only, you will be able to give back your borrowers the rate of interest. So for example, fixed deposit, the bank is ready to pay you 6% interest per annum example, which means I should lend to the persons that is to the consumer at 12%. So if I give loans for 12%, I can give a fixed deposit rate interest for 6%. This is the idea, this is the strategy behind the banking concept. Now, moving forward, what are the major functions of bank? Starting with accepting of deposit. So let us start with the very, very basic function called as accepting of deposits. Very interesting and very, very important function. Why is it? Because deposits are the amount that the customer hands it over to the bank. Now the customer knows that instead of keeping the money idle with him, let me deposit to the bank so that the bank will give me a fixed rate rate of interest at any given point of time. Now this becomes quite interesting why because the idle money is going to earn some more interest and it is going to come back to the hands of the consumer at any given point of time. This is known as making a deposit which means to say that now you have created a repository by borrowing the money from the consumer. So this is very, very interesting, very, very important altogether unless and until you have taken it and you have not you know, made a receipt out of it, an acknowledgement out of it. This is not going to happen. So it is very, very important that you take this and you create a deposit, you create a repository. Now the deposits are of many types, saving deposit, fixed deposit, current deposit or a recurring deposit altogether. Now the deposit might be the same type in the sense what I mean by saying that you are going to put it in the same bank. But the bank has got a different process or a methodology by which they call each and every deposit by different names. Now when you say a savings deposit, that could be for a longer time period. Now, a fixed deposit could also be for a longer time period. When you say current deposit, that is for a recent time period or a shorter time period. Now, a recurring deposit is one which you keep on putting in money on a monthly basis, on a particular fixed time basis altogether. So what is happening here for the bank is that it is attracting the customers to come towards it and hand over the money so that they will be able to collect the money from the consumers and rotate it back in the market. So now look at the factor here. The bank is actually trying to take money from the consumer and run the money back in the economy as a systematic way of running the business. So the bank is not going to invest its own money. Bank is not going to start doing business on its own factors. The bank is going to take money from the consumer, make it as a deposit and then make use of the money again, rotate it in the market. So that is why the various deposit schemes are also based on the frequency, the time limit, the interest factors and all those things that comes into picture. Now you might not get the same rate of interest what you get in fixed deposit for a recurring or what you get for a recurring for a current deposit. The reason is that the frequency and time length matters because that's where the concept of time value of money comes in. When you keep the money for a shorter time period, you might get a lesser rate of interest. When you keep the money for a longer time period, you might get a higher rate of interest. So that is why what happens is that banks start judging the customers based on the amount, based on the time length and based on the type of deposits that they do with the bank. Then only they will be able to take it forward and build the system. Followed by the next factor called as granting loans and advances. Now the major function of a bank is that definitely loans. Unless and until you give loans and you take interest out of it, there is no fun in running a bank. So what does a bank typically try to do? 
the bank will again try to float schemes under different names, under different constituents altogether so that the people can come and borrow loans. Now, for example, let us start with educational loan or vehicle loan or you can talk about property loan or a housing loan. What does the bank do is that depending on the nature and type of loan, there will be an interest rate that will be fixed. Now, let's say that I want to borrow 50 lakh rupees for building a house in Mysore or building a house in Bangalore or any part of India. Then what happens here? The bank will provide me that money based on a particular rate of interest. Now, let's say that the bank says I will give you a home loan for 8.5% per annum on that 50 lakhs. So now what happens here is that the bank will start earning revenue by giving me a loan. So this is how banks will start looking into loans. For the consumer, loan is a liability. For the bank, loan is always an asset altogether. So more the number of loans that the bank has given in the market, the more they are successful in terms of rotating the money back in the market. That is what will depend on the success, the functioning of the bank. So what we try to understand here is that the profit of the bank is directly dependent on the loans and the recovery of the loans as far as possible because if they are not securing the loan if they are not securing their advances and deposits then they will not be able to get their money back similarly when we talk about the word called as deposits that means to say that now, now when you talk about this advances and deposit, when I specifically go about advances, that means I give you money in advance. I give you money at a particular time length, at a particular period altogether, so that you have to return the money back with a particular rate of interest. So here, the bank will take time to calculate the rate of interest, to calculate the time period in which they can recover the money. And they will also calculate calculate in how much percentage we can go further so that they will be able to make profit on the loans that they have given. Most of the people think that it is not mandatory for us to just pay only we'll just pay back the principal we don't have to pay the interest or the interest is already imbibed in it but then let me tell you whenever we talk about the word called as EMI which means to say that equated monthly installments whenever we talk about this word that means you are going to pay principal plus interest that is why it is very very important it is always principal plus the interest that you are going to pay. So when you are going to pay that, that interest amount that the bank derives from you as a consumer is the major form of income for the bank. Now, moving forward, let's talk about the secondary function of the bank. So is the bank also having a secondary function altogether? The answer is definitely yes. Why? Because bank is also like any other business organization or an institution altogether. Why? Because the bank will always think about an ancillary amount of money that has to come in different forms and format. If they don't have that money, if they don't have that facility altogether, then probably they will not be able to survive. So that is why I say that the bank functions majorly towards in terms of understanding the agency functions. Now, how does this work? The bank is an agent for its customers in the way it invests on behalf of the customer. So definitely they will do that. Acting as the agent of the customer, they will definitely act as an agent of the bank, which may transfer the funds altogether. And the collection of checks, then we talk about periodic payments, portfolio management, and we talk about periodic collections and several other functions. Now, what are these agency functions altogether? Why is it so important for the bank? 
for every financial service or transaction that is done by a consumer today in the market there is going to be a charge because that's how the bank can make an extra or an ancillary income for its survival so what does the bank do is that it creates its own version of a service department or a service desk which will be able to do all the financial functions and transaction so that becomes even more interesting for all of us to understand how bank is able to make its own income from different angles as far as possible we might think that the money is just provided by rbi to the bank so the bank does not have to worry whenever the bank needs money it will just make a call to the rbi the rbi will deposit money but that is not true at all RBI will only set the guidelines, RBI will only pave a path to the bank in terms of corporate governance and in terms of the functioning. But how you have to make your profit, how you have to reclaim back your bank status, how you have to successfully run your bank is your strategy. So that is why private banks or public sector banks will have their own agency functions through which they will be able to collect an X amount of money which will add on to the income of the bank. Now, moving forward, the secondary functions continue with the general utility functions also. Now, what do you mean by this general utility function, sir? Why is it so important? The banks also perform several utility function, which means some sort of services that they do, which might issue about drafts, letter of credits, locker facility, underwriting, dealing with foreign exchange, project reports, social welfare, all these are utility programs that the bank run. Now, what is the speciality of utility, sir? Why is that actually coming into picture? When you look into the utility programs, these are all again additional incomes plus these are all functions which will try to attract the customer at a greater wavelength. If you look into this ideology of foreign exchange and all those factors, these are all the extended benefits that a bank gives it to its customer. Now, for example, when I go to Canada Bank or ICICI Bank or when I go to HDFC Bank, they don't want to stop with one single facility for me. When they provide me with a debit card, they also ask for a credit card. When they provide me with a credit card, they also say there is a personal loan available. When they say there is a personal loan, they also say there is foreign exchange available. What they are trying to do here is that they are trying to combine each and every operation, make it as a package and deliver it to the consumer. Why this is important is that for a person who is going into the bank, he should feel that at any point, the bank is a single stop solution for all financial needs. So when I go and talk to my banker, my banker knows exactly how to give a tailor made solution for my problem. It might be on wealth management, it might be on overdraft, it might be on advances or it might be on any project management report that it wants. But then the bank is there as a backbone for my survival. That is what is very, very interesting when we talk about the secondary functions of the bank. Today, when you look into your own banking website, you will be surprised to see the amount of services that each bank has developed. When you visit an ICICIbank.com website or an HDFC bank, there are so many offers, so many services that they start providing to a customer. Like a simple thing is changing of PIN through online or if you'd have, you need to make any checkbook request or you need to make any transfer payments or you need to add funds, all these things are getting an add-on function for the consumer so that in the long run they are able to attract retain the customer and also make some extra income so that is why i say banks also provide several services like the safe deposit locker custody facilities dmat account which is now becoming very very popular i think most of you know that using a dmat account you will be able to trade in the share market by buying and selling of equities commodities, futures and option. All those facilities are being given by the bank. They also help you to trade in money market like foreign exchange. You can buy and sell foreign exchange. So all these factors are actually of a very, very great help to the customer. 
The customer feels that the bank is giving all this facility for him just for one single savings account. But in reality, that is not true because the bank is going to definitely charge you for every single function that it is going to add up. But in general, let's try to understand this factor. The bank is definitely a powerhouse, a one-stop solution for the customer to understand his financial needs. Moving forward, we're going to talk about this interesting factor called as the debit card. Now a debit card is a plastic money or a plastic card that has been given for your own bank account. Debit cards were introduced in 1966 across the globe and in India after 91-92 we started introducing the debit cards. Now debit card is an instrument by which you can withdraw money from your own account by going to the ATM and filling in the correct pin number you will be able to withdraw money under particular denominations. So you will not be able to take in 10s, 20s or 50s, the minimum demo, uh, denomination is 100 followed by 200 followed by 500 and then the 2000 rupees. So that is how you will be able to withdraw money at any point of time from any of the mentioned ATMs and you can take money from your own account. So this is a highly interesting and a useful service that was created and innovated by the bank in any you know if you start understanding the word called as ATM which stands for automated teller machine but in a common factor people started saying that anytime money that's the amount of power that bank has innovated towards the consumer but then in reality with the automated teller machine coming into picture the consumer does not have to go and stand in the long queues of the bank wait for the withdrawal of money he can use this debit card which is linked to his account and go anytime and withdraw money at any a particular designated ATM or the point of sale altogether. So debit card definitely a very very powerful instrument that has been designed by the bank for the consumers. Followed by the credit card. Definitely this is one of the yet more powerful tool which I would say in terms of the banking facility altogether. Many of us in India do not like the word credit because we might feel credit is something like borrowing money. It's a liability factor. But then in reality nobody can survive without a credit. So there might be emergencies. There might be time when you have to borrow money. When you have to make some expenditure for your family, for your personal needs or for any sort of exigencies that come across your way. So for that, the credit cards have been designed so that you can use it by swiping the card at a particular point or at a particular time. Like the debit card, it is not an instant withdrawal. You can repay back the money after some time. That is normally they give a time length anywhere between 30 to 45 days within this time period you can return back the money to the bank so for example you go to a hotel or you go to a shop and you do shopping using your credit card and let's say you have made a purchase worth of 10,000 rupees you can return back that 10,000 rupees after 45 days to the bank again so the bank initially lends you by giving you that small amount as a credit money which can be repaid back either on installment basis or on a full-time basis. So that is the power of having a credit card into picture. Followed by, with this, I come to the conclusion of this session. I hope and believe all the information shared with you will be of a great help and resource. In the next session, we will be talking about the functions of the bank from the point of rising of funds and about the lending functions and other factors. Until then, stay tuned, stay blessed and stay enlightened forever. Thank you once again for joining me on this wonderful session.